Brought to you by Curious Marineland. So now, after looking at a previous video when we looked at this, we're going to look at some practice of this. Pa active and passive transport. Walking, things that can pass through the cell membrane. So we're going to look at these scenarios. Uh, you won't see a flash of energy, but you'll see going against the concentration gradient for this, for passive and active transport whether it's with the concentration gradient, whether you can diffuse through, or in the case, or osmosis if it's water, or if you can use facilitative diffusion, or using a protein channel, or using a protein channel and going against the concentration, concentration gradient. All right, so let's do this. Let's go to, we've already looked at this one, and then we looked at, passive and active in this video, in a previous video. So we're going to go use this site. So just remember, how did you get this view? We slice the cell. Now we flip it over and we look in. So what I want to do is just spend like two or three minutes looking at different aspects. What I want to do this website. Uh, yes, it, you can what you got. So let's do this. Let's pick a molecule. Let's do, when you click that, it says passive diffusion. Pay close attention. Hey, there's 80% out on the inside. So watch when we hit play. It's going to move in. It's going to move in. And look, it's going to stop at equilibrium. Let's, let's look at carbon dioxide. Hey, there's more inside than there is outside. Hit play. And the carbon dioxide is going to flow out until it reaches equilibrium. I'm going to just shrink this down to 125 for the sake of, uh, so I don't have to keep scrolling. Now let's look at, uh, hmm, let's look at glucose. There's a lot outside the inside. Now this is, there's one exception to this. See, this is going to go in and it's not going to stop at equilibrium. Now I'm going to stop it for a second. The reason that that happens is as soon as glucose is broken down, it goes in, it's broken down, so it's constantly flowing in. We'll learn about that when we get to cell respiration. But you'll notice it used, um, for oxygen, it said passive diffusion. For glucose, it says facilitative diffusion right here. And it uses the carrier protein. Now, let's talk about sodium. Look at what it is at inside versus out. There's more inside than there is outside, but watch what happens. You'd think it would go out? No, it's going in. It's going against the concentration gradient, and this is going to require energy. And, this is a, and you notice it says active transport. The same thing would happen with potassium. This time it's going out. This is part of the sodium-potassium pump. Um, that's one of the things we learn when we talk about in, in neuroscience and in anatomy. We talk about this in great detail. So look. Look at the before and after. There's more outside, and, then, and it keeps sending it outside. And again, these two would require energy. So the last thing is food and waste. Before I do that, that we're going to have to zoom out. <coughs> That's endo and exocytosis, taking things in and getting rid of things. It may be waste, or this right here could be a secretory cell that goes somewhere else. So let's, let's go back to here and change this to food and waste. So we zoom out and watch. Endocytosis. Maybe that's molecules that this cell needs. Whatever you don't use, you get rid of. And now watch exocytosis. There we go. One thing about the endo, as you see here, and you're about to see exo again, these are happening at an equal rate. If you don't, then you lose some of your cell membrane because, as you watch, this is a vesicle. This cytoplasm is different chemistry-wise than this outside part. This vesicle helps protect it. All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's go back to here. All right, and let's just go back to our regular cell membrane. And do a little music as we leave. All right, that's it. Brought to you by Curious Moranland.